When it comes to investigating cybersecurity incidents, it is extremely important to understand user behavior. You want to ask questions such as, what did that user do? Who logged in during that time of interest? Was anything executed? And was any files being read? Asking questions like that will help you understand the potential scope of the impact of the cybersecurity incident that you're investigating. Today, I want to share with you a specific field found within the 4624 event ID within the security event log. The event ID 4624 essentially tells you which account was logged on during that time. And if you're interested in learning more about event IDs, I'll leave a link down in the description below in which you can go ahead and take a look and learn more about event IDs. I also created a video about 4688 talking about that specific event ID and why it is so important during cybersecurity investigations. So what is this specific field that I wanted to introduce you? Well, it is called logon ID. Any events logged during the logon session will report the same logon ID. In other words, pretend that I'm an attacker and I compromise an account called Bobby. So I will use Bobby's credentials to log into Bobby's computer. Once I am logged in, I will connect to maybe a network share. I will also maybe execute Mimikatz, for example. And during those actions, a specific logon ID will be tied to every event. So you as an investigator can now correlate all of that activity during my session. Now there is a caveat though. Although logon ID exists within the event ID 4624 under security, you need to have specific logs to be enabled to help you paint that picture. Logs such as 4688, for example, or even 5145, which provides you with events related to network shares. So let me go ahead and jump straight in and demonstrate the effectiveness of looking at logon ID within 4624. Once you learn this, I want you to always think about this ID whenever you're doing an investigation to try and correlate and understand the bigger picture during an incident. For this demo, let's say we are the attacker and we got access to Bobby's machine via RDP. Oh, and by the way, on this machine, we have Splunk installed and that is what I'll be using to view my event logs. I'll put a video that I created on how to install Splunk in case you want to follow along. Now that we're on Bobby's machine, we somehow know that there is an important document listed in documents. So we'll head over there and see what kind of files exist. We'll double click the folders, double click, and we notice that there are two files here, one called super secret file and one called my passwords. As an attacker, we are interested in looking at these files, of course, right? We'll go ahead and double click the super secret file. We can see secret content. Perfect. I'll put that in my notes. My passwords, ABC. Okay, great. Put those in my notes. And just for fun, since a lot of attackers love to do this, we'll open up command prompt, type in IP config, maybe even net user and also net local group. That way you're enumerating the information, specifically your user information. In theory, these events should be captured along with my unique logon GUID to track all of my actions. As an attacker, I am done with Bobby's machine. I viewed the two sensitive files and I also ran a couple commands on command prompt. Now I'm good to go to just log off and call it a day. We'll head over to Splunk now and let's say that the SOC has a use case that triggers when super secret file had been accessed. As you can see in the triggered alerts page, we can see that the alert successfully fired. So we will go and hit view results. I have seen some analysts where they will take the contents of the alert and escalate just that to the client without any additional information. Do not do that. You want to try and gather as much additional information as you possibly can. Since this example, we talk about logon ID, let's pivot using logon ID and see what other events had been generated during that session. I'll go ahead and copy the logon ID and paste it in, hit enter. From here, I'm going to change the format to all lines and also change from fast mode to verbose mode. 
Now we have additional fields that we can work with. I went ahead and cleaned up the search query just a little bit. That way we can see all of the events in a table format. As an investigator going to the time of interest, we can see notepad.exe was opened to view super secret file. Now there was another notepad and it viewed my passwords. Now, again, we are only pivoting using the logon ID and we're already finding so much additional information. If we were to scroll down just a little bit, we notice our command.exe with the commands that we ran. So IP config, net user, and also net local group. Searching the logon ID and using that to pivot, we can start seeing user activity related to our threat actor. And what did the threat actor do during those logon sessions? Well, that is it for the video. And if you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to.